Inspection Boys. Hey, Bridget, how are you? Um, Good. Thank you for joining. So, so yeah, so basically, guys, I just wanted to uh, get a home inspection company, a franchise home inspection company uh, on the call here so that you guys can actually um, hear from a home inspection company uh, exactly um, what's going on nowadays. So, so Bridget is with uh, the Inspection Boys. Um, they're a Long Island-based uh, company. However, they do work out of Westchester. They work in all five boroughs, the islands. Um, we at Keller Williams have been using them for several years. And, um, and it's a franchise company, which is a concept that I know very well. So, um, so Bridget, you know, tell us a little bit about um, what's going on. How you, how you guys doing? <laughs> well, thank you, Adrian, for having me on here today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's crazy what we're all experiencing right now. I don't think there's any one individual who's not going through some type of issues when it comes to the virus right now. Um, yeah. As far as us, we're just trying to adapt as best as possible, like everybody else during this time. Um, we are still open for business. And like you said, we do, we're Long Island based, but we cover all of Long Island and New York City and Westchester. So if any of you guys have any home inspections that need to get done, we're here to help. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I had a couple of questions that I wanted to just go over with you. So first off, how are you guys doing inspections nowadays? First off, how is this happening for you guys? So it's, we're taking a lot of precautions because obviously the health of all the inspectors and clients and agents is our number one priority. Um, so right now, currently, if somebody calls us uh, to do a home inspection, our first question is, um, is the house vacant or occupied? Uh, so what happens if it's occupied? So if it's occupied, we're still doing the inspection, but we're asking them, are there any, uh, any people who are sick at the home right now? Are there any children present? Um, we're really trying to be careful wow. with that. And if there are people that are living in the house, we ask to limit it to just one person. We understand that um, you know, sellers may be nervous to you know, leave their house when they live there. So we ask if you know, just one person on the seller side can be there to make sure that they're not sick or anything like that. Um, all the inspectors. Well, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, sorry. Yeah, I was talking to an attorney friend of mine, and and they mentioned that there should be something that it, that's in writing. Yes. That the inspection company, and then the the home seller have before you guys actually walk in. Like everyone knows, have you tested positive? Have have you not? Are you you know what's going on? Yeah. So we do have a document that we are doing right now that's included in our online agreements that sent at when the time uh, when the inspection is booked. So yeah. we are abiding by that and have everything in writing too, because you know it's a yeah. unique circumstance right now. I'd love to share that uh, that tool um, with the people that are that are listening. So if you don't mind sending that to me, and if anyone is interested in seeing what that uh, what that writer looks like or or what that uh, that contract looks like, um, feel free to let me know, and we'll get inspection boards to send it over to you guys. So um, absolutely. So yeah. So basically, um, so. How would a homeowner that's purchasing a home ensure, okay, so let me backtrack. So you guys are actually are stepping into the home. Yes, um, we are going into the house. We're wearing masks and gloves and we're trying to protect ourselves as much as we can. Right. And are, are, what about homes that you cannot inspect? Are there any homes that you have to say, no, I can't do that? Is there any other way that you could actually uh, you know, do your job and, 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 and get the homeowner who still wants to purchase the home uh, how does that work? We haven't had that experience just yet, um, but um, what I've heard of some people doing is uh, they'll talk and uh, you know communicate with their attorneys and try to get the home inspection perhaps done at a later time if there is somebody sick within right. the house. Um, if there is somebody sick, we won't risk going inside the house at the moment. Um, we just haven't had that happen to us yet. Right. Um, but I know that buyers, we're, we're encouraging buyers work very closely with their attorneys right now, as that would be really like an attorney question to see on how they can proceed yeah. if a situation like that were to come up. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I think they're probably learning just as much as we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think every field, like every aspect of real estate, whether you're a home inspection company or you're a buyer or a seller or, or, or an attorney, um, you know, you have your, your receptors up, right? So yeah. like norm, that, that's why I think that we're still, you know, obviously very valuable in this situation because um, you know something that, that a, typ a typical homeowner doesn't know or a typical agent doesn't know. Um, and, and like an attorney would definitely be the ones that think of a contract you guys 
would think of, you know, inspecting this part of the home and not walking in the home. So I think that's, uh, that's where the value comes in. So for the people that are watching, like um, what part of a, a home does a home inspection not cover? Because I've been to, you know, several home inspections and, and uh, uh, oftentimes I, I'm, I come across a situation where something's not done or, 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 or what, what part of the home is the home inspection not covered? Because this is, a lot of people have this impression that, okay, I got home inspected, they got everything done, everything is cool, and, uh, and let's go on to closing. And there might be something that's not covered. So legally, what, what do you guys cover and what don't you? Well, that's a great question. So there's a lot of different variables of when that could change. Um, when we go to a property, our goal is to try to inspect every everything that we can access to. With that, there are limitations. We can't see through walls, obviously. So whatever's behind drywall, we can't see. Um, we can't, you know, check all the wires behind the, the walls. Um, but also some things that are just a little bit more obvious is electrical panels, right? Um, if an electrical panel is not accessible, maybe the current owners have boxes blocking it or they're, it's in a closet and we can't access it, that would be something that we wouldn't be able to inspect until the seller removes those belongings. Um, attics, if there's not easily, if the attic is not accessible easily, um, then we would, we would have to disclaim parts of the attic. Um, same thing with crawl spaces. Not all crawl spaces can we enter because the space might be too tight. If there's water within the crawl space, then we don't do anything that involves that because if there's any type of electric wires touching the water, then we could get electrocuted. So there's certain situations, it's all about safety from a home inspector side, but also liability as well because ultimately, if we were to break something of the sellers, it would fall on us to fix it. So we try to really be careful and make sure that we're not breaking anything. Um, and that's why prior to when the inspection is, is booked, um, we send out an email to all agents that are involved and we pretty much let them know, can you please make sure that these items are easily accessible so that we can properly inspect it. Right. Um, and just to avoid situations like that from happening. That makes sense. So do you guys get on the roof? Do you do a lead inspection? Are you testing for termites, um, cesspools? So uh, lead, lead is a, is a totally separate license that has to get done. And what we normally advise uh, uh, for people with lead is lead is usually dangerous if you eat it, um, like the paint. So yeah, so it's not something it's that like we the common sense stuff, right? Like, yeah, don't eat the. Don't eat the, the so it's not usually something that we test for. Yeah. Uh, we recommend that if a buyer is having, you know, some type of, uh, maybe they have a child who likes to bite things, or you know, I don't know. I've heard some crazy things before. Then we have an outside company that we work closely with that we can recommend for the lead inspection. Okay. But it it is an expensive inspection to get done. Right. Um, all our inspections include a termite inspection, um, so we do provide that, um, and that's 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 just part of our standard inspection fee. That that we include that. Um, as far as um, you were asking, uh, cesspools. So <laughs> Suffolk County cesspools is a big thing. Uh, we're very limited on how much that we can inspect the cesspool. So when we are inside the house we are inspecting all the plumbing systems and we're running all the plumbing to try to inspect as much as possible um, cesspools are traditionally underground um, well not traditionally always underground and um, you know we can't open up the cesspool or anything like that um, and usually a professional cesspool company if you really want to get a more invasive um, cesspool inspection, they would be the ones that would have those tools to actually open up the cesspool and, you know, look at it more thoroughly than what we're able to provide. Yeah. We I, try I, to do as much as we can. Yeah. I owned the property on um, Indian Head Road in, um, in Kings Park years ago. Okay. And part of my inspection was just the basics. So what I had to do is pay out of pocket for uh, an actual cesspool inspector to come out. So yeah, they opened it up, uh, they treated it, they sent in a chemical, um, so, I mean, it, it did cost an extra couple hundred dollars, but I mean, for my peace of mind, it was... Uh, yeah, and that's also part of home maintenance, too. Like, cesspools, they, you do have to maintain them every so often. Um, so, it's part of, like, a homeowner, um, I guess, honey-do list, if you want to call it. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, so, um, I don't know. I mean, do you think, um, what else is, uh, how often, well, you, you, you complete the report, and how long does it take for you to get it back to uh, the attorneys, the buyer? 
So usually uh, we try to send it out the same day as the inspection. However, the latest that we'll do it is 24 hours after the inspection has been completed. Um, if they are a NACA inspection, I'm not sure if you're familiar with NACA, but um, <clears throat> if they're uh, well, if they're a part of, if they're in with uh, the NACA program, it's based out of New Jersey, then those inspection reports take a little bit longer to turn around. Okay. Um, but normally it's same day or within 24 hours. And okay. if it's not within 24 hours, we give a $50 discount. Right okay. Away. And, and, it, and the, this report does go to the actual uh, purchaser. See, I, I've dealt with a lot of uh, clients that they, A, they don't want to read it. B, um, when they do start reading it, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to understand mm -hmm. the terminology and then they leave it off to their attorney and they leave it to the broker to actually handle it. And then they forget about the home inspection company. So I think it's important for us to talk about like the homeowners. It's your responsibility also yeah. not just leave it to the attorney and the broker to read over your report and then call the inspection company. Right. And that's something that you're, you're right. That's a common problem uh, when we're dealing with buyers. So as a home inspection company, what we like to do is go the extra step. So when we're meeting with the buyer at the time of the inspection, we go through the most major items that we found as a home, as a, when we're doing an inspection, we're inspecting so much at that time. So we're not going through every single detail with them because that's going to overwhelm them. So we go through the most important items that they need to be aware of at that moment. Um, and then when the re inspection report is sent out, we provide them a summary page that highlights, again, the most important items that we found at the time of the inspection. We also encourage them to read the inspection report in detail. And if they have any questions, they can always reach out to us. Even if it's a, even if it's a year from now, we've had buyers reach out to us a year after they already own the house and they be like, Hey, uh, where's the shutoff for the, you know, the, the boiler? Okay, I will look it up on the inspection report. It's right over here. So we don't disappear. We're here, whatever questions they may have, or if they need us to come out even after they bought the house to check something out, we will do that. So we're, we're, we really pride ourselves on our customer service. Well, one thing that I really like about you guys is uh, your presence, your automation. You guys are really, um, you guys are really present on social media. Um, a lot of people know about you guys. For the folks that don't, uh, realtor, a lot of the realtors that are working, uh, at least throughout the Queens and the Long Island areas, are definitely uh, uh, working with the inspection boys. And, Thank and you. We appreciate that. All over the place. So um, you. you guys do a very good job about that. Um, anything else that you want to touch base on? Um, I think, I, I mean, I, I think this was very informative. Um, you know, do you want to mention anything else? I mean, no, I appreciate you having us on here. Yeah, Our thing is we just want to educate everybody as much as possible because just like the buyers, um, you know, the, the inspection time is a very stressful time for all parties. And we want to really try to, to limit that stress and try to make everything as smooth and as seamless as possible. So with that, we encourage agents as well to communicate with us if they have any issues or if something comes up that they're not sure about or how to deal with. We really recommend them to reach out to us because we'll definitely try to go the extra step with them as well. Nice. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Bridget, uh, Inspection Boys. And uh, what's the website? What's the phone number that they can reach you at? Uh, so our website is theinspectionboys.com. Phone number is 516-591-3262. Cool. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks for taking the call. I appreciate you. Of course. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Take care.